Guys, for change, I'm going to be cooking today. Yes, cooking. So, I'll be making sisig for my brother, and there will be a surprise at the end of this video. So, first of all, I have two chopping boards. One is for raw, and this one is for cook. So, I'll be using the cook one later on when I'm done cooking this and I have to chop it. So, first, I will now slice the pork ears. Basically, got pork ears. Make sure it's clean, okay? And then make sure that you cut it into bite sized pieces, not bite sized pieces, chunks. So that when you boil it in, I call it core bouillons, basically soy sauce with other herbs and spices. Then basically, it will cook it until it's tender. Basically, we're gonna braise it. So. After that, I'm going to chop some onions and garlic for my CC. Aside from pork ears, I decided to get some pork butt or also known as pork shoulder because CC is not good when it's just all fat. I need CC that has a bit of meat so that I don't get high blood too much. So this is the pork, but I'm also cutting it into cubes because I'll be ba basically boiling this too with that. But sisig is actually a pampanga dish and I usually, usually it, you can find it with liver and other meat, specifically liver and brains. But my brother, since I'm making this for him, he doesn't like liver or brains. Maybe he needs some. He's <laughs> just kidding, boy. I'm making this a innard-free CC just for him. So now all the pork has been cut except for all the ears. I still have one more ear lobe left, I believe. Yeah, I think that's all the ears. I got all the ears except for this one. Last ear. Remember guys, cleanliness comes first. Every time you slice something raw, wash your hands afterward. Okay guys, now, this is basically water lamb. I will now get my spices, which is black pepper and soy sauce. How much soy sauce? Roughly per kilo of cheese, you're going to need about half a cup soy sauce. And then you need a lot of black pepper. Why do you need that? You're basically going to braise this until it's tender. So you want to infuse it with a bit of saltiness and a bit of flavor into the dish. So, a bit of salt. That's it. That's basically my raising liquid. And now add in the pork ears. Keep all the pork bits. We will now put it all in. Let this simmer and braise for about a good hour or so. So that until, until it's tender basically. Okay guys. The pork ears and pork shoulder are now tender, as you can see here, okay, it's tender now. So first, I got a baking pan, they usually deep fry this, but I'd rather put a little bit of oil, the bottom para, so it won't stick, so it will not stick, so spread the oil around the bottom of the pan, okay. Now you put your pork. Make sure that you get all the pork in the pan. Because I'm going to bake this thing and make sure that it is brown all over or at least a bit roasted. All the pork is now in the pan. We will now put this on the oven at around 350 degrees 
until it's brown all over. Okay? Okay guys, I have gotten them out of the oven. It's now nice and brown. I will let it cool first, then I'm going to blow torch all the hair out of the pork. Okay guys, uh, it's quite cool now. So I'm going to start my blow torch. I'm going to singe off all the hair. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay guys, I have done mincing most of the pork. I have left me with two ears. So that's it. I have to slice it julienne. Sorry for the sweatiness because I've been chopping like hell since getting up. Okay, cut it julienne. And then basically you want it a semi brunoise. A little bit a little bit bigger than a brunoise. Just cut it to small squares like so okay so see see it's done okay guys now it's time to cook the see first of all i will use the oil that was rendered from the pork that we put in the oven kanina this is gonna be deadly oh i can feel it I can feel my high blood going up. What is for my brother? Hello. Now it's a heart problem. Sir. Okay. So next, you saute the garlic and the onion. Clean the are a bit transparent. We'll now add in the chopped up pork bits. See? Ta-da! I don't know guys if you noticed it, but I didn't put chili in mine. Why? Because I'm going to be using this. I got this from Canada. It's Blair's Beyond Death. If you heard the Sudden Death song, this one is way beyond that. It's like uh, around 300,000 Scoville units. Good luck to us. Ooh, that's thick sauce. That's a lot too. Thank God, I'm going to my stomach. Hey. Oh, that's really spicy. I can smell it now. Okay. Now we will encourage the meat to coagulate. When I mean coagulate, we will need to add in the broth of this. To this, let it smell like that spicy stuff. Okay, so now we have to strain it because all the peppercorns from braising are still here. There, yeah, see that? My seasick has turned orangish because of the hot sauce. Now we will let this simmer until so it's almost completely evaporated. Right, let's reduce a lot. Now it's ready to be eaten. Okay guys, now that the seasick is done, we will now proceed to our inihaw na bangus. Bangus is a milk fish found here in the Philippines. It's basically one of the staple fishes here in the Philippines. First of all, you get your butcher's twine. I've already cut my butcher's twine to roughly this length. Then, I'm going to soak it in water so that when you grill the fish, it won't burn. Okay, we'll set that aside. Now, 
Let's prep our ingredients. So we get our serving bowl, and then we have our ingredients and trash bowl. First, we'll start off with the onion. which is basically pepper black pepper to be exact and instead of putting salt I prefer using soy sauce okay guys here I got two bangus already we call it daeng or basically boneless and it's already butterfly now we fill this with our mixture. Make sure that you don't finish it all and put on only half. So now you have two fish that are stuffed. This is where the butcher's twine will come in. You use your butcher's twine, you basically tie a noose, and you basically tie your fish one noose at a time. See, this is the final product, guys. Look. Nice and tight. It will now go wrapped in foil, then eventually grilled outside. Okay guys, I'm back here and now I'm going to make fried chicken basically. I already brined my chicken for here. I already brined it for about 3 days. And then now I have my spice mixture here with flour and cornstarch. Now I'm going to add some more spicy paprika. Now, my dredging powder is ready. Next, while well, waiting for my oil to heat up, we'll start my stuff. Preferably, it's supposed to, you're supposed to use peanut oil, but I prefer palm oil. Make sure that you have a bowl with a strainer ready at hand so that whenever you cook something fried, you can put it there so that the oil will drip. Now we can add our chicken. We add our chicken roughly about one to three pieces at a time so that you will, have, you will not drop the temperature of your oil and you'll have a very crispy batter. Now, my chicken's cooked. You can see it's perfectly golden brown. Okay guys, as you can see I have 
pork belly sliced and marinated. I've been marinating this in my own secret sauce. Basically, it's garlic, uh, garlic, vinegar, and other spices, and specifically black pepper. Whole black pepper corns. I marinated it for a week. I'm now going to preheat my pan. If you can see, it's getting hotter and hotter. My grill pan, so I can grill pan this until it's perfectly done. Hey guys, my pan is now hot. I'll now add in pork. You don't need to put oil. Basically, what the grill pan will do is you're going to sear it on the outside and encourage the meat to really hold its oil. It's actually the healthier version. this last because I want it to be still sweet I'm basically going to use the oil that I use from the pork my it has flavor already that's why okay this for our last dish I'm going to fry some garlic minced garlic and julienne ginger that for a while. Let the aromatic kick in. Lower the flame. And here's the last dish. Crack it up quickly. Yes, we're having shrimps. They're, they're gigantic. I did. I'm not going to add any salt to this because I want the natural sweetness of the shrimp to come out. This will only take a few seconds for. I don't want to overcook it, but it will be hard to peel. You have to constantly stir this. So that you have an even cooking all throughout. See, so you can notice there's already liquid coming out. The natural juices of the shrimp. You have to make sure that the shrimp is fresh. Because if it's not fresh, basically you're going to have mushy shrimp. Happy birthday, Kuya! Happy birthday, Kuya! Oh, 